I've got this old Finder Blues Deluxe. It's from about 93, 94. I think these were in production from 93 to 97. The idea of this was to give it a good clean up, clean up the cover, glue it down. Control black was a bit rusty. But unfortunately when I plugged it in, all I got was a very low distorted signal. Initially I thought it might have been a blown speaker because that little plate thing on it was loose, but I've confirmed that that speaker is okay. Then I thought maybe it's the tube. So I started the old tap test and the power tube sounded a little bit pingy. So I took them out. I found a brand new set of 6L6. I chucked them in and uh, no change. I started thinking maybe it's going to be those diodes or those uh, 5 volt resistors that always go in these. Apparently these have really bad design there and things overheat. So I might take off the back, do a visual inspection, see what we've got going on and uh, we'll go from there. What I thought I might do first is we might just turn this on and uh, give you a listen to what it's actually doing. Got volume on four, the EQ's just all middled out. It's warmed up, I don't know if you can hear this because it's so quiet, but this is on like six. You can probably hear the acoustic part of the guitar bit more than the amp, but... It's just super low output and distorted. So, let's get the back off it and see what's going on. Hey guys, just a little reminder, I'm not an amp technician, but I do know a fair bit about electronics. If you are never done this type of thing before, or if you're unsure about what's going on inside the back of an amp, just take it to a technician. Don't do it yourself. Biggest problem here is this stuff here, you touch something in the wrong place, you can do some serious damage to yourself. Here stand on end and sometimes your toes will turn up. So just, if you don't know about it, don't do it. I haven't discharged the amp, so I'm not gonna touch any of this, especially not with these. Um, I might want to tap test later with a chopstick or something um, non-conductive. But for now, all I want to do is a visual one. I can see something weird here already, but first thing I wanted to look at was these diodes and these five watt resistors. I can see that they're quite dark and black around there. So I've, I'm guessing that they've overheated and it's dark on the backside. So um, something we'll probably do there is just tap them to see if that makes a change. The other thing I'll do is just check these preamp in and outs. Um, sometimes if they've got dirty connections, and the speaker connection, those are dirty, that can cause this type of thing. But otherwise, we'll just have to start trying to eliminate what's wrong with it. Now, the weird thing that I can see here, I've been told that this has had some factory mods done to it. I've got the schematics there to look at and have a look at those. This here is just a repair. So this wire and this wire are repairing the trace tracks that have been bitten out of this board. Now, I don't know why anyone would take a chunk out of that board unless it was an accident. That's a shame, but it is what it is. This resistor is usually located under here. Yeah, there, under here. So I'm guessing, I have a look under there. Yeah, there's a big black spot. So that resistor, the factory one burnt out, which is common in these, and that's been replaced. There's another one over here somewhere that should have been replaced too, but. No, there it is, still factory in there. So I have to get the multimeter on here. Uh, first thing I want to do is just test it. Positive negative voltage uh, here, I think it is. Check these diodes and check what voltages we've got coming off the back of these tubes. That's about all I can do at this stage. It's got all the original caps in it, which I think probably could be replaced. There's no visual leaking on them, but we do know that those are crap. So we're going to have to replace those anyways. I have to order some of these because I don't have any. These are the five waters and there's the diodes that are usually done in these as well. Always cooked. All of these need to be replaced as well. Bit of work. The other issue this had, I've taped it on there for now, but this little plate that holds the speaker wires, which go to the cable and then go to the back of the cone, that little plate was broken off. Um, and I thought that might've been the initial problem, but I've taped this on there just for now and then tested the speaker and the speaker goes fine. What I also did is I plugged in an extension cabinet on this um, and just tried it through another cabinet and I still had the same problems. Okay, so I've got it fired up. Got a little bit of noise coming out of it. That to me tells me that the tube's gone, but I've replaced these and I had no difference. This could be a faulty tube, but it's not the cause. What the? Got a noisy tube here, but I have replaced these with brand new ones and it doesn't change the fact. So I think something here is going on in this area. Tried the power amp in, power amp out. No difference. Try 
inputs, difference, try going in the power amp, in, we've got the same problem, so that tells me it's not the preamp section. It's definitely something to do with these power amp area. That's too noisy. This is concerning to me. I need to clean this up. I want to put that resistor where it's meant to be. You can see it's in the right place in theory, but it, it should be over here. And then I, want, I want, think I'll clean these wires up because these, who knows, these could be broken or anything. Just, I don't know what's going on in this area here. It just seems really odd to me that that's been done to this amp. So I'm going to put the multimeter onto these pins and see if we've got voltage here and see if we've got positive and negative voltage here. Got my multimeter on, I've grounded it. Keep one hand away while you're doing this. Just use this hand. So on here, on one side I should have around 16 volts and the other side I should have around negative 16. So we just have a look on that pin. Okay, we've got 16.5. Now this side should give me a negative 16-ish. There we go, negative 15.8. So that's, that's good. Down here on this, that should be around 16. That should be around negative 17. Damn it, it's never easy, is it? And here we should have around the 400 and something. Yep, 448 volts. And if we go over to here, we should have the same. But we don't. We've got one volt. Something's wrong there. It could be this guy. Because we've replaced the resistor on that side, but not this side. What I think has happened is this tube has gone. I may have put these in around the wrong way. So this one here is the one that I think is faulty. That could have been in this side. So what I think has happened is the tube has gone. So I do think that's faulty. And I think that has caused this resistor to burn out. That would make sense to me. I'm pretty sure that's what happens if that goes and it just... Say this gets up to a certain temperature, just glowing, that resistor just goes pop. So I reckon if I pull that resistor, it's going to be burnt out. So what I'll do is I'll replace this resistor. I'm going to redo these track wires. I don't like that they're just messy and hanging around like this. They need to be a little bit neater. I'm going to put this resistor where it should be, over here. And then I'll replace this one as well. I'll also replace under here. There is a couple of more resistors in here that are the same kind of deal. Um, they just, they just go bad design, poor design. I think we need to replace these guys, uh, these five watt resistors. I think we need to replace these diodes and all these caps. And I think that's where I need to start. So we'll do that job and see if we can get this thing going. I am going to have to order all this stuff. I don't have this kind of thing in stock. These sort of things don't go into guitars, bro. <laughs> so I'm going to have to order all this stuff um, and come back to this project. Alright, so we're a week later and the parts are in. Time to strip this bad boy down. It's about now that I notice that these tubes are different sizes, so I doubt they were ever a matching pair anyway. To save a little bit of time, I'll take the screws off the bottom part of this so that the board can lift up from there. Uh, it's just unscrewing the tube mounts. Just double checking that those caps have discharged enough. Don't want a shock. You've got to be really gentle pulling these boards out because those ribbon cables are so fragile, they just they just break. I think Fender's main goal with these amps was to build amps as cheap as possible and make them sound good, but they weren't really too concerned about reliability, I don't think. Okay, and we can see here these plate resistor is wickedly burnt out. And you can see this one, R59, has already started to discolor. And we can see there were R51 and R52, which is the 71k ohm and the 100k ohm uh, resistors on the plate that will need to be replaced as well. I don't film all the soldering here because you mostly just get the back of my hand, so not really worth, worth the time.
I'm just checking the voltages on the back of those tubes to make sure that we're getting what we need. Now with all that working as I wanted, uh, it's time to replace all these filter caps. And I pull this board down and oh god, it has been repaired before, uh, but not very well. The repair job on this is atrocious. There's flux all over the back of that board and I'm going to need to clean it all off. And I'll redo all those tracks and the jumper wires when I put in the new resistors and diodes. I'm going to use a little bit of silicon on the back of these capacitors. Uh, it helps with vibration, helps to hold them stable so the vibration doesn't weaken the solder joints. And yes, I am replacing these with the same ICS style caps. It's all I can get locally at the moment. I've got good ones on order and they will get replaced once they're here. It's a pretty simple job and I don't mind doing it. I'm just putting a blob of silicon on the legs of these 5 watt resistors because the back of the board is in such bad shape I need something to hold them stable from vibration. And although we got a nice clean sounding signal, the signal is almost non-existent. So there is still something wrong with this amp. And I was scratching my head for a little bit and then all of a sudden the light bulb went off. How about you test your output transformer? And yep, I tested the old one and the speaker out had a short across it. So there was a short somewhere in the transformer. The only one I can get is this reissue one. It's from a Hot Rod Deluxe reissue, has all the same stuff on it. I just need to make a slight chassis modification. It's just a matter of drilling one extra hole um, so that everything can mount nice and securely. And right about now, the butthole puckered up and I thought, oh shit, but then I remembered I'd taken the board out. She's all good. Almost a disaster. I did start to wonder about all these metal filings too. I started to get a bit worried, but I got the uh, little compressed air in there and blew everything out just to make sure there was nothing sitting on the board.
Now, the control panel looks like the underside of a 200-year-old pirate ship. I don't think there's much saving it. I'll give it a wipe down, but I can't really take too much of it off because I'll just lose all the text. You can buy replacement ones, so we'll see how we go. All right, so everything's all nicely repaired. All those plate resistors are replaced. We've got new plate resistors on the output section. We have a nice new output transformer. The 5 watt line is all done, new resistors in there, and all the filter capacitors have all been sorted. So, this thing should work now. But before we get to that, let's address the way this thing looks. I would say she's had a good life, but she could do with a little bit of a scrub up. In case you're wondering what products I'm using to clean this with, again, this is just a bit of detergent and water. And then I used some automotive interior cleaner. And it came up okay. I could probably do with another clean, but I'm pretty happy with how she's looking. Let's hear this thing. Mm -hmm. 